glug, glug, glug. That's the sound someone makes when they're drowning. What would happen if Blue's Clues had a tragic story and past, causing the show to get abruptly cancelled? This is Men's Hints, which tales an alternate ominous and tragic backstory of a horrible tragedy, which involves the down spiral of the host's mental state, leading to a grim incident with the lives of many being taken. How many? <laughs> I can't remember anymore. There were so many. I lost track. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, and welcome to the secret story of Men's Hands, which entails the tragic story of what was meant to be a happy and child-friendly TV show. Keep in mind that this is my personal theory so far, analyzing the clues and hints we have been given, which implies to what I'm about to tell you. So take it with a grain of salt, and I would love to hear your own theories down in the comments. Grant, the host of the show, introduces the mascots of the ARG-style child TV show Sprinkles, the Cupcake, and Mint, the Fox. Welcome back to Mint's Hints, everyone. I'm your host, Grant, and today I'm here with Sprinkles, the Cupcake, because we're having a party. Look, everyone, it's Mint. Do you have something you want to say, Mint? What's that? Your friend Fuchsia's coming to the party. Well, that's awesome! That must be him. Let's go let Fuchsia in, guys. Huh. Looks like he already made his way inside. I wonder where he could be. Do you know where Fuchsia is? What's that? He's right behind me. There he is. Hi, Fuchsia. I see you've met Sprinkles. Are you ready for the party? Wait, stop. You can't eat Sprinkles. She's our friend. <laughs> Grant seemed to have been one of the favorite hosts who gets replaced by another showrunner, which he doesn't have much memory of. All of a sudden, after the footage cuts off, the host gets greeted by Sprinkles, who explains that the protagonist has been asleep for a long time, who has finally awakened and now he has found himself in the world of the show. What is strange, however, is that he is in a literal world of the show, not a stage with its characters having come to life, characters which were animated or puppeteered. You're finally awake. I'm so happy to see you again. It's been so long since you've been here. Speaking of which, you may be wondering how you got here. Let's just say you're one heavy sleeper. Anyway, that's not important right now. What is important is that we're throwing a party and you're invited. Quick, follow me inside. The party is about to start. A lot's changed around here since you were the showrunner. I bet you won't even recognize most of the cast. After you left, a new showrunner took your place and really shook things up. That is, before the show got cancelled, of course. Let's head inside so you can introduce yourself to everyone. Having been replaced by another showrunner and the show having been cancelled now, the protagonist is invited for a special party inside the main house of the show. Sprinkles instructs Grant to speak to some of the living household items to get himself familiarized with the set again. Talking to some of the household items, a sinister backstory starts to unravel with adult and grim themes unsuitable for children being uncovered. Toasty, being a toaster, tells the protagonist not to place it in the bathtub, which of course would lead to electrocution, causing the heart to stop. The sinister and dark undertone might suggest something we don't know about Grant and what has really happened to him. Having the option to answer yes or no if we want to put Toasty in the bathtub, answering no leads to Toasty brushing it off, saying he must have mistook Grant for someone else. But 
answering yes reveals something ominous, with Toasty begging Grant not to do it again. Keep this in mind as we will get back to it later. Talking to the bathtub known simply as Tubby, he makes a menacing sound of someone breathing underwater, explaining how it is when someone is drowning, having more sinister undertone behind this line. Glug, glug, glug. That's the sound someone makes when they're drowning. Talking to the knife, which has been labeled as a mix of a child-friendly yet adult-themed name, Stabby. He quite literally talks about how many people have been stabbed and how he has lost count. How many? <laughs> I can't remember anymore. There were so many. I lost track. Something tragic must have happened here, which is being displayed in an allegory suited to fit and blend in with the theme of the show. After talking to all the party guests, Sprinkle suggests Grant to play a game where he needs to find hint prints which are scattered all over the house. These hints need to be recorded in the special notebook called Happy Go Lucky Notebook, which seem to lead to something specific, something that needs to be discovered. I wonder what it might be. Amid all this, there is a door which is not blending in with the cartoony theme of the show, being dingy and dark, having a large sign dissuading anyone from entering. Now we can start a party game. For this game, you need to find the hint prints scattered around the house. The hint prints are all hinting at something, and it's up to you to figure out what that is. The first hint is a stickman drawing of a mysterious anonymous someone being the new showrunner who has to replace Grant. Second clue is a picture frame of Mint, not much more background info in it. Finally, the last clue is of a chainsaw, which is a dangerous power tool which shouldn't have anything to do with a child-friendly TV show. The chainsaw apologizes for something it had done, suggesting the victim was Mint as it was Sai's friend. Having managed to collect all the clues, putting them all in the Go Lucky notebook, Grant sits on his solving chair and puts a scenario together. The scenario is anything but happy, being an eerie and ominous discovery that the new showrunner used Sai, the chainsaw, to attack Mint and essentially pose a massive risk to it, maybe even killing it. All of a sudden, speaking to Sprinkles, the lights turn off and the cupcake shouts while being abducted. This is really bad! No, wait! As soon as the lights turn back on, Sprinkles is gone, with a trail of hints being left behind for Grant to follow. Being confused and scared, a mysterious caller rings the telephone, telling the protagonist that he needs to leave instantly through using the door in the laundry room. You need to leave right now. There should be a door in the laundry room that leads to the way out, but it needs a key. If you've made it this far and haven't found the key yet, you might need a special flashbright to find it. This is the same door with a large do not enter sign, which requires a specific key. Inspecting the garden outside of the house, Grant finds several tombstones with the paw marks of mint and fuchsia. Finally, entering this locked place. The colorful and vibrant world of Hensman's completely changes, having dark and somber tones, with crying clouds and nightmarish rooms not suited for any child to see. This place seems to be hiding the secrets of the show and what has really happened here. This eerie maze-like place contains several paintings on the walls, which are the representation of tragedy, fear, anxiety, and negative emotions. That's when an uncomfortable sound of someone eating can be heard, displayed to be coming from the other mascot fox, Fuchia, eating Sprinkles, the cupcake, who has tragically died. The multiple paintings of eyes ever watching the previous showrunner, the protagonist, displays the need for attention, yet the ever scrutiny and judgment Grant had to experience and endure. 
Through this terrifying maze, ghostly and floating embodiments of Focia and Ment hunt and torment the protagonist. Having two flashlights, one in the color tone of Focia and one for Ment, the protagonist manages to finally get to an elevator and go deep beneath the ground, escaping the wild embodiments of the foxes finding a stretched out version of Ment. This embodiment of Ment seems to be suffering and under pain, being locked away in a secret room with a vault-like heavy security door. So what the hell is going on here? And what that really happened to the original showrunner who got replaced with another? Well, even though it's not canon and it's all left to speculation, it's clear something ominous and tragic took place, which possibly was the reason the show got as they say, abruptly cancelled. Grant was an enthusiastic host of the cartoon show called Men's Hands, which is heavily inspired by Blue's Clues. Grant seemingly loved the show and gave his all when in the set. That's until one day he hears the news that he has to be replaced with a mysterious person to be the new showrunner. This clearly upset him and drove him to insanity, causing him to lose his mind and feel lost, as the show was his persona. It was something that made him who he is and something that was an important part of his life. What's that? What do you mean it's too late? No, you are you already replaced the showrunner? No, not with him. Oh my god, not him. You know what his plan is. You can't do that. This is horrible. It's safe to say, learning that he is getting fired broke him. It's not clear why he was being replaced, but there could be many reasons. One, that he might have gotten too old and was in the retirement age, at least for the show, as it was meant for kids. A natural cycle of these kind of shows and their hosts. In the very beginning, we hear from Sprinkles the Cupcake that the original showrunner was in a deep sleep, who suddenly wakes up in an alternate version of the set, which is very much alive with living characters who don't rely on special effects and post-production editing anymore. Sprinkles quickly explains a new showrunner took the role as a new host when the protagonist left, which changed the show a lot, with many things being different. The show eventually gets cancelled abruptly, with not much known to the reason why. We don't know if the host we see in the intro is the protagonist or if he is the new showrunner, but most likely he is the original host, meaning that the protagonist is the same person. Grant goes to the house he once knew very very well, talking to some new characters and some familiar casts. Talking to Toasty, a well-known character, it speaks about something ominous, asking if Grant is there to throw it into the bathtub again or not. Having the option to say yes or no, saying no, Toasty simply dismisses the question, saying how it must have mistook the protagonist with somebody else, who had done this before. On the other hand, saying yes. Toasty begs Grant not to do it again. No, no, please, not again. Accordingly, talking to the bathtub known as Tubby, he makes drowning noises, saying how these are the sounds of someone drowning. Clearly, these lines of monologue are not appropriate for a child show and should not be included. Glug, glug, glug. That's the sound someone makes when they're drowning. So they must be correlating with Grant's psyche and personal experience. Why is the toaster telling him not to throw it into the bathtub again? Well, by the sounds of it, Grant had thrown the toaster into the bathtub and possibly drowned after being electrocuted a tragedy which could have led to the cancellation of the show. Now, some other items which have sinister monologues are the knife and chainsaw, which shouldn't have any place in the cartoon show. The knife suggests it was used for stabbing so many people, and the chainsaw suggests that it was used to kill Mint. How many? <laughs> I can't remember anymore. There were so many. I lost track. Hi. Sorry, I didn't mean to. It was my friend. The clues also suggest how the new host used the chainsaw to kill Ment, with many tombstones being shown outside the house. According to all these clues, 
It is heavily implied that Grant was a loved host to the show, who is told that he has to be soon replaced with an unknown new host. This drives Sam mad, believing the new host will not dedicate himself enough as much as he did for the show, effectively killing the show, which is symbolized by the chainsaw being used to kill Mint. This causes Grant to lose his mind with overthinking, going on a massacre, attacking the studio and the set, hurting as many crew members as possible. Eventually, not being able to live with his actions anymore and feeling defeated that he lost the role so valuable to him, he subsequently and right after his attack, drowns in the bathtub with the toaster, electrocuting him. This tragedy makes many crew members losing their lives, which is portrayed in the tombstones in the outside garden, while Grant wakes up in an alternate world seeing the world of men's hands coming to life, while the dark secrets and facts of his actions torment him which he has to uncover behind the door being off-limit. This tragedy seems to have been the main reason causing the show to get cancelled abruptly, being always a painful reminder of how so many lost their lives and the once-loved host of the show who entertained thousands of kids. I believe in the second chapter we will learn more about this and how the characters of Mint and Fochia, the main mascot foxes, were destroyed after Grant was let go. We already see their ghosts floating around in the dark corridors in the off-limit space of the show, being the dark pits of Grant's perception and mind. Ah, pretty dark if you ask me. What are your thoughts and theories about the story? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, it's been your host Star, thanks for being here, and I will see you on the next one. Have a fantastic day.